artists, Mrs. Gordon here. So happy to see you. Uh, today, we are learning more about the artist Clementine Hunter, and we're going to take a look at some of her paintings of flowers. So uh, before, um, one of the, th well, not before, but one of the things that Clementine Hunter did was she was famous for her landscapes and her scenes of drawing people in action um, around their buildings and where they lived and, and their homes and their places of worship. Um, she was also very well known for drawing these amazing um, still lifes of flowers. So a drawing of the outside of the land, we would call a landscape, a drawing of something uh, that sits still, like a, like a bowl of fruit or a vase of flowers, we would call a still life. And this is a still life of some flowers. And the marigolds are the ones, those big puffy flowers, those are the ones she really liked drawing. And so you can see kind of the puffy edges all the way around it. So we're today going to do a drawing of um, flowers, either zinnias or marigolds, I'm not sure which one, inspired by Miss Clementine Hunter. And I love her, um, her signature down here, the CH. So let's get started. All right, for this, you will need a piece of paper. You will need some crayons. You will need some, um, maybe a pencil if you wanna use a pencil um, or some paint. Uh, so you could either draw it first and then paint it. I'm going to probably draw and then paint, maybe use some crayons for myself. Um, we are going to be holding our paper vertically like a tall building. Um, and we're gonna start by adding a vase at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to start at the very, let's see if you guys can see this, the very bottom of my page. I'm going to make a curved line, curve like a smile at the bottom of my page. And then I'm going to, on either side, I'm going, actually maybe I'll turn this into like the lip of the vase. So then I turned it into kind of like a hot dog looking shape. Zoom in on that. Is it okay if it's not perfect? A hundred percent. It's a hundred percent okay. And then so I've got, I turned my smile line into a shape by adding another curve line on either side and a curve like a smile line on the top, made it kind of like a hot dog shape. Now I'm going to draw the vase. So I'm going to do a curved line here and a curved line here. And I just noticed that my curved lines aren't perfect and that is fine. I'll make this one a little longer. And what I might do over here is I could add a handle because sometimes she added a handle. So I'm just going to do a backward C and another backward C inside. So now I've got the handle for my vase. Now I'm not gonna worry about doing the top of the vase because she had um, a lot of, um, a lot of like flowers kind of spilling down over it. Um, so for these flowers, I'm going to make a circle because they were very circular, but I'm gonna do it with a bumpy line. So maybe I'll start one down here. And I think I'm gonna do another bumpy line and maybe a circle in the middle. And then I'll do another one. Kind of bunch together, bumpy line, bumpy line, circle in the middle. And I'm just gonna keep adding flowers with a couple bumpy lines and a circle in the middle. Two bumpy lines, circle in the middle. Now, she did not, in, in all of the, the flower paintings that I saw of hers, she did not have anything going on in the background. She didn't add patterns to the background. You can do that if you want to. And I kind of wish that I had started with lots of different colors of crayons because that would make it fun to color in. Um, but then maybe I'll add some kind of leaves 
And she kind of liked these organic shapes. So I'm just kind of doing a ziggy zaggy line. Ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy. Ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy. Um, and now would be the fun part of going in and painting these or going in and coloring them. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in parts and then I'm going to paint the whole thing behind one color to get the background in. And she loved using lots of bright colors. So I was looking for a nice bright blue. And what I might even do to make it go fast is to peel my crayon. And I'm just gonna, just broke that piece off on purpose, believe it or not. And I'm gonna use the sides and I'm just gonna go in here and go right up to the edge. Maybe where my pencil line is, I'll go darker. And I got some stuff underneath it. I'm just gonna use the side of my crayon to fill in my base. I'm going to go dark to get rid of my pencil line. But I love using the side of my crayon for coloring in big things because it goes so much more quickly. And again, friends, if you make mistakes, it is okay. Art is a really safe place to make lots of mistakes. Um, now, I want you to start thinking about, I think I pointed out to you how Clementine Hunter would always sign her name. And I want you to think about what your initials are and what color or what you might. So my initials are NG. My first name's Nicole. You can know it. You just can't call me that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color in my leaves. And I'm coloring in pretty hard because I'm going to be painting over the whole thing. And so I want to painting over it with watercolor so they'll run right off of my crayon. But I really want it to run off my leaves. So I'm painting my or coloring in my leaves really dark. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to show you a great tip for how to get the, the flowers colored in quickly. Because you guys are busy people. I know. You have thing, Nintendos to play and hoverboards to ride and bicycles to ride and books to read. Can't spend all day coloring it every day. Although it, coloring is fun. We do have fun coloring. So then my, my good quick tip for flowers is I'm going to thing and hopefully your parents aren't cranky with me for having you do this to all your flowers but I'm gonna or all your crayons but I'm gonna have you peel your crayon break it a little piece off don't be mad parents give your kids a ziploc bag full of give your kids a ziploc bag and let them fill it up with all their little broken crayon pieces broken crayons are my favorite I mean what else can you say about what other thing can you break and have it still work? Oh, there's a leaf I forgot. Ah, where'd my green go? Oh, it's a different color green. Oh, well. So I'm going to go over all of my bumpy lines. See, this I wish I had done without a pencil because then I wouldn't feel like I had to go over it. If I were to do this again, that's how I would improve upon this. And bumpy line, but you know, it's okay to have the pencil line showing. I've got to remember that about life in general, that we can make mistakes and we can figure out things for next time, but it's okay if our pencil lines show a little bit in life and in other things. Uh, maybe I'll have one over here. But I think that's what I would do next time. Okay, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the side of my crayon to color those in. Look at that. So I drew dark with my... Look how quickly I can color in those crayon, oh, those, those drawings. Let's see, let me get another color. 
So this is kind of a peachy color too. Just peeling off my crayon here, friends. And I like this, the reason I'm breaking my crayons once I do this is because <laughs> I like the, um, I like the smaller pieces to use for the side. So then I'm gonna go all the way around. So the smaller, the sides of the smaller crayon make it easier to color. If I have a whole big crayon, it makes it harder. Now this last step, you could do a couple of different ways. After I finish coloring in my crayons, I want to add a colorful background. And she just added one color, and that's fine. So I'm going to paint, but I'm going to show you what else you can do too, is you can use the side of your crayon again. Okay, and you could, uh, like I pick a different color, probably maybe I use this yellow color and I could go and I could color in the whole, using the side, color in my whole background. Or you could do both. You could do, ooh, I got a really interesting texture there where I hit some blue from the base. I'm just using the side to rub. I lay my crayon down on its side. Those of you who are in first grade already, remember Night Night Crayon. Okay, so now I have my background colored in very quickly. I am going to go ahead and just add a little bit more yellow to that background. So I'm using my Temper Cakes. Temper Cakes you probably don't have at home, but they're very similar to watercolors. So if you have watercolors at home, then you can just go and paint over the whole thing. You could stick to the background or you could go right on over the whole thing if you want. That does make it really pretty. I love how then you see some of the yellow in between. So friends and artists, I hope you had fun today. We made a still life inspired by the folk artist Clementine Hunter, the prolific, that means she made a lot of art, folk artist Clementine Hunter. And I can't wait to see your vases of flower, your still life flowers inspired by Clementine Hunter too. Happy art making friends.